listen to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. All right, Rachel, so how did you first learn about, uh, you know, Teen Challenge, the Adult Stash, or Adolescent Stash? The church I attended in Miami, Oklahoma, actually had the New Life House girls come every year. And so when I started going to church there, the girls would come and do a service trip, and I got to know about Teen Challenge that way and kind of had the thoughts at different times, like, oh, it'd kind of be nice to go and work for them and stuff. And so uh, the pastor's wife and uh, the director of the Teen Challenge at the time, who was actually transitioning out, I worked a, a uh, garage sale with her, and she's like, hey, what do you do? And I told her that I had been working with adolescents, that I was a teacher and working with adolescents. Um, and she said, hey, uh, would you consider moving to Disney, Oklahoma? And I was like, sure. And so uh, through working that, that um, grad sale with them, uh, I put in an application, and next thing I know, I'm moving from Miami, Oklahoma, to Disney, Oklahoma, and working here. My role here for Adult and Teen Challenge Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma Adolescent Centers is I am the Dean of Students for the Cross Christian Academy, which is the accredited school that the students attend here when they come into our program. So when I saw the Dean, it wasn't a good thing, so <laughs> what does that entail? Uh, you know, I'm sure you're working with the kids and overseeing things, right? Yes, sir. I, my job entails that I request transcripts when we get new students. I communicate with the parents about the student's education. I make sure that the kids are in the classes that they need. Um, if they need credit recovery, we get them in those classes. If they need to be do a placement test to find out where they need to be in school in case they're behind, uh, we can do placement tests and see where they need to be. I also make sure that we do our standardized testing every year. I work with dual enrollment. We do dual enrollment with, the, uh, with Oral Roberts University with our students um, to help get them uh, college experience while they're still in high school. And um, we also, I also do disciplinary issues if a kid's struggling in the classroom and needs to be removed uh, for, from, for a few minutes so that they can uh, regain control of their emotions or whatnot. I'm, I also handle those kind of situations as needed. Very good. Um, talk about uh, the vision, the mission, the heartbeat of this ministry. How would you describe it? It's uh, the vision, mission and vision for here is multifaceted. Uh, we want to bring healing, whole person healing to individuals, uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically, uh, you know, in all areas. And so the mission and vision is to bring hope back into the lives of our students and our, and, and not just the students, but their families as well. A lot of uh, families, struggle. It's not, I mean, I think when you think of the, a student coming here, that it's only about the student and helping them get back on track, but it's, it's a healing in the family. It's a restoration of the family. It's, it, it's a whole healing in the family because we work with the students, but we also work with the parents and, and not sending them back into the exact same environment and that, that was the struggle possibly in the first place. And so our mission and vision here is to be able to bring restoration to the student and to their family so that um, they can continue to work together as a family and, and work together to know what Christ has done in their lives and how Christ is bringing healing to everybody in the family, not just the student that's in crisis. Very good. Um, so talk a little bit about um situation these kids come from, maybe how they're maybe behind in class or grade levels. Talk about that. Yeah. Here at Oklahoma Teen Challenge Adolescent Centers, it's we have a wide range of students that come in here with different physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. Uh, we have kids that struggle with behavioral issues. Um, we've had kids that come in that have struggled with reactive attachment disorder Maybe they have uh, autism spectrum disorders. Maybe they have uh, eating disorders or depression or anxiety. 
Uh, we do have kids also that come in with oppositional uh, defiance, um, just unable to respect authority and um, to struggle with lying and manipulation. But we also have students that come in and it's they have chemical dependencies, drugs, alcohol, you know, that kind of stuff where they've gotten in trouble maybe at school or at home. And this is an opportunity for them to come and get their life back on track. And some of those emotional, physical, and um, spiritual struggles have caused kids to get behind in school. And so they come in and they need to get caught back up. So we do have with our school curriculum that we use, which is a, a faith-based computer uh, program that we use, we are able to help get them caught back up with our credit recovery process. And um, we also do state hand testing so they can still have like their eighth grade reading test for their driver's license and stuff like that. We do ASVAB testing as well. So if a student, we, we do that for anybody who's a sophomore and above. We offer the ability to do ACT testing. Um, so if they're going to college and they need those test grades, we're also able to help get those. We Offer dual, we offer dual enrollment. We're part of an educational fellowship with Oral Roberts University out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we do dual enrollment classes with them and help students that do come, that come in and they're not struggling, but maybe school wasn't challenging enough. And so that was part of their struggles is they, they lost focus in school because they weren't being challenged. So we're able to offer dual enrollment classes with Oral Roberts University so that they can be more challenged. So when we talk about evangelism and discipleship, um, talk about how the Lord is using this ministry to help introduce them to, a, to Jesus and to hopefully encourage them to love Him, follow Him, obey Him. What does that look like here? Here, we, we do have several different backgrounds, cultural back, backgrounds that come into our school. We have students, uh, even religious backgrounds, that come in and, and maybe they have no idea. They've never even had a Bible before they came in and, and they ended, they got one from us or their parents brought one with them. And so some students have never had any kind of Christian background. And I've also had students that they were on the worship team at their youth group. And so we have a wide range of students who come in here, but our staff they're trained to mentor and disciple and speak with our students and uh, be prepared to answer questions and, and be involved in their lives. But the big part of mentorship and discipleship is they will, we they will meet weekly with their program guides and the program guides communicate with the students and with the parents weekly and uh, the program guides mentor and disciple and invest weekly in the, their students and um, obviously discipleship is the way that people grow and develop into mature Christians who are able to bring other people to Christ and reproduce in, in bringing other Christians. And that's, you know, it's not just about students getting healing, but also helping them to bring healing and, and mentor and be with others. So how can Christians get involved in support a ministry like Challenge of Oklahoma, the adolescent centers. People can get involved here at the adolescent centers in many ways. They can, uh, first and foremost, prayer. Uh, we we are daily in and out and on the front line in the lives of these students, uh, praying for our ministry, pay, praying for our staff, uh, praying for our student counts, and and bring being able to bring students in, uh, praying for. Um, we need we need uh, scholarship money. There's students. Some students can't afford what this program costs, and so we want to be able to to bring in students that that need to be here that can't afford, and so praying that the fi the finances come in for us to be able to do that. But um, we also have had groups come in. We've we have some groups out of Oklahoma City that they'll come and help. They help remodel the building that we're in right now. Um, they will come in and do painting. We have different work projects that are bigger than what our maintenance crews can handle. And so we need people that have, you know, we've had men's groups, we've had women's groups, we've had church uh, women's ministries adopt our, our girls' center and 
invest in washers and dryers because whenever you have 32 teenage girls in a house and they all need to do laundry, washers and dryers don't last all that long. <laughs> um, but also, you know, we've had them adopt rooms and get the bedding and paint the rooms and, and help remodel. And so we do, ha we, we like to invite different groups that are able to come on campus to help and, you know, with help with remodeling jobs or even just um, sometimes dr drywalling or concrete work or something. So some people think that they, they don't have anything to offer us because they don't have money, but it's not just about money. Uh, in this day and time, time is money. And so being able to be involved here in other ways instead of just money is, is a, good, a good thing. We also have volunteers. You know, if, if people are in the area or they're retired or whatever and they want to volunteer, we have a volunteer packet that they would fill out to be here more day in and day out with our students. And uh, that's another great opportunity for people to get involved. So why do you do what you do? I'm called. I do what I do because I love seeing students transition from their struggles and their self-dependency to learning how to rely upon Christ and how to pray and how to seek Him, how to let His Word come alive. I love it when they come to me and say, Miss Nicholson, like God spoke to me and, I, and, and it was right here in the scripture and, and show me how powerful it meant to soak that into their spirit and it, and it moved those six inches from their brain down to their heart, you know, and actually come alive. I love it when the word comes alive. I love it when uh, the students get excited about making the changes, where they see themselves succeed in areas that they haven't before. I love to see it when a kid that was behind in school and never thought they'd get through with school and they were ready to quit and give up and just be a dropout, finish high school and go on to college or a kid that just thought he had no hope and ended up finding passion in the military and being able to go in and be successful. I love it whenever my students get excited about our sports programs and they've never played a sport before, but they go in and they do what we train them to do in practice and it works and they just look over at you and they jump up and down because they're so excited. I do what I do because I believe in mentorship and discipleship. I know personally, if I hadn't had people come alongside me when God was dealing with me in the hardest times of my life, I wouldn't be where I am right now. But it's having people involved in your life that will lovingly mentor and disciple you, hold you accountable, speak life into you when you're struggling or when you're having a good day. I mean, just being able to be with my students when they're seeing that there's hope, hope in their life, and they don't have to live the way that they used to. Seeing the passion change from, I'm never going to be able to do anything, to, I can do things. I can seek the Lord and find His Word. I, I, seeing kids understand that Christ died on the cross for their sins, and they don't have to carry that baggage. When, when these kids go to the altar and they leave their baggage down there and they come back completely different kids because the baggage is off their shoulders and they can square their shoulders and they can start walking in a new freedom that they never had before. I mean, those are some of the most amazing moments I've had is when students have that encounter with Christ and they feel forgiveness for the first time because they've been carrying so much bondage in their life and they start to light up. They go from the darkness into the light. I love seeing my students changed from mopey and unhappy to joyful and, and alive and ready to tackle the world that had beat them down before. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today? I can just talk for hours about how awesome my, my kids are and you know I've been, I have been here almost 12 years. In July, it'll be 12 years that I've been with Adult and Teen Challenges of Oklahoma. And I am humbled 
by the opportunity to work for this ministry and uh, be involved in other ministries in the Adult and Teen Challenge of Oklahoma Centers, um, being able to work alongside of them. But understanding the biggest, most important thing is none of this freedom happens apart from Christ. I mean, that's our biggest thing here is understanding that people don't bring change. Christ brings the change. We just get to be part of that journey with them and uh, allow God to use us because he's changed us. And so we want to, in return, use that to help others. You know, and I, I, you know, it's about Christ. Christ brings the change.